Okay, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. But today we are in Bali. I'm in Bali this week to get together with a couple different creatives, do some photo shoots, make some videos for you guys, and I am super excited. Today what I wanted to do is talk to you about this, the new camera that I just got, the GFX. 50R by Fujifilm. I wanna to talk to you guys about why I got it in the first place, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, compare it a little bit to my current camera, which is the Sony A9, which I'm shooting this on right now, and uh, show you guys a little BTS. Now this is by no means an official review of this camera. In fact, the way that I'm using it probably won't apply to most, but I just wanna share with you my experiences, what I really like about it, and uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about it. All right, let's talk about why I bought this camera in the first place, especially when I love my Sony A9 so much. It's because I'm sponsored by Fuji. I can't even say that with a straight face. Of course not. I bought this camera used on B&H Photo. I actually recommend uh, that people buy their camera stuff used. I've saved hundreds and hundreds of dollars over the years, but knew this camera is $4,000. I found it for like 3,300 bucks, which is an insanely low price to get into medium format photography. And speaking of medium format photography, that is the main reason why I bought this is for its bigger sensor. A lot of people ask me, well, it's 50 megapixels. Why didn't you just get the Sony a7R4 if that has even more megapixels? Because megapixels isn't really what I need. I definitely don't need more than 24 megapixels that I shoot with right now. It's plenty for my, uh, for my clients for printing for albums, for printing for wall art. 24 is all I'll ever need. What I wanted was the bigger sensor, something drastically different than what I currently shoot with, something that will give me a different looking image. Even though the Sony is pretty much better in every other way, the autofocus is better. The Sony shoots up to 20 frames a second. I use it at five frames a second, whereas this one only shoots three frames a second. This has a blackout. There's so many reasons why the A9 is just like a better camera for pretty much everything except for for me, the look that this medium format sensor gives you. So what does the medium format sensor actually get you? So for me, it changes the perspective of the photograph. So in the same way that from a crop censored body, going to a full frame body looks different, it's that level one more step. For me, it makes a more present look in the image. It also allows for the ability for even shallower depth of field. I know that this probably won't apply to most, but as somebody who shot at 1.4 for the last couple of years, I want something that's got incredibly shallow depth of field. Now, this is a 65 millimeter 1.4, and this is a 40 millimeter 1.2, and when they're on the medium format sensor, it actually makes them look like a 0.95 would equivalently on a full frame camera. So with that little bit of information shared, let's talk about the lenses. The two lenses I'm using are this Mitocon 65mm 1.4 and this 40mm uh, 1.2 from Voigtlander. Now I'm not sure of the exact math on it, but basically in the same way that like a 35mm on a crop sensor is like a 50mm on a full frame sensor, a 65mm on a medium format is more similar to a 50mm on full frame sensor. So what this means is you can get an even more, like a slightly more compressed image that you get from this while still having a similar framing as a 50mm would. And that is one of the reasons why you can get that shallower depth of field. So this comes out to looking more like a 50 millimeter 0.95. This comes out to looking more like a 33 millimeter 0.95. And because of that, they're both able to give me this dreamy look that is so, so amazing. Now this lens vignettes really, really badly. Almost doesn't quite cover the sensor. And so you're gonna need to fix that vignetting in post, which is not a super huge deal. You can just save that out as a preset. Lightroom takes care of it for you. So the most obvious one, the most blatant one that applies specifically to me is that most of the native lenses, if it's a prime lens, is a 2.8 lens, which I know isn't a big deal for most. Most of the zoom lenses are f4 lenses. So you're actually not getting a shallow depth of field if you use one of the native lenses as your typical 50 millimeter 1.4 that you would use on a full frame camera. I went ahead and got these adaptive lenses, these non-native lenses. And because of that, they don't communicate with the camera. So there's no autofocus. It doesn't tell you the aperture that you're shooting at. And it doesn't tell you the focal length and the FX data. And the manual focus has really slowed down my whole process of shooting. Now you could call that a good thing or a bad thing. I definitely can't have people walking through the studio anymore and I can't have them laughing and moving and forward and back and playing around. I really have to have them take a deep breath and stay still 
Now the imagery that comes out of it is amazing. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's forced me to shoot in a little newer kind of way, a little bit more slower, more thoughtful process, which has been actually really healthy for me. That's been the biggest negative for me, is just slowing down and checking focus. The good thing about Boudoir is there's not a ton of movement, so like a lightning fast autofocus isn't really a make or break thing. It's just definitely gonna make things easier. The next negative thing about this thing is the size and the weight. It's so much larger than my Sony and it's so much heavier. My arms are actually tired when I'm done on a shoot with this. It's so heavy that to shoot like this for a long time wears down my arms. So I've had to change and shoot like this so that I can use support with both hands. I can keep my arms down, which is a little ridiculous, but it's definitely something that's had to happen. I bought this wooden grip from Small Rig, which has made it so much easier to hold. Before I had this, it was even more exhausting. So definitely if you're gonna get this camera, I cannot recommend the Small Rig grip enough. But overall, it just makes it a lot more comfortable to shoot with because this is just a beast. The next negative is just the slower frames per second. I get it, it's a medium format camera. It's not a sports camera. I don't really use my A9 as a sports camera, but five frames a second is not too much. When somebody's laughing or moving or taking steps, it's really nice to be able to just get a couple different shots in a row. So that way you have some variety and some options to choose from. With this at only three frames a second, it definitely slows down and doesn't allow you to get as many uh, images in variety if you're looking for something spontaneous. So you have to really, really, really be patient with this camera. So let's talk about who this camera's for. So in my opinion, the Fuji GFX 50R is for people who are patient and who are looking for more image quality than they are looking for features or convenience or efficiency in their cameras. And believe me, I realize the irony of me using this camera when so much of my business is about efficiency, doing same day sales, uh, not doing as much retouching. Everything is about speed, speed, speed. But if that kind of image quality is really important to you and that look of the medium format sensor is really important to you, then it far, far outweighs the benefits of faster autofocus and more frames per second. If you're looking for an extreme depth of field that can't really be captured on a full frame camera, this will amaze you. It's absolutely unreal the bokeh that's created from it using these adapted lenses. Also, this camera is for anybody who wants a low cost entry into the world of medium format cameras. This is the cheapest one that B&H sells. New, it starts at $4,000, but the Hasselblads go up to 30,000. The phase ones go up to 80 or $100,000. So to basically get into the market, uh, such an inexpensive price, I think this is totally the right camera to get. And lastly, this camera is for anybody who wants the look of medium format film, but doesn't want to go through the process of actually shooting medium format film. My friend Austin Trenholm has a company, The Good Light Presets, and I've been using that on some of these images, and it really has been staggering how much it looks like film. Who is this camera not for? For anyone of whom speed is the most important piece. And if that's the case, then I think nothing beats the Sony A9. So I'm gonna leave you guys with a few more images that I've shot on this trip. Some boudoir, some travel, some random, but I think you really enjoy it. If you guys like this video, definitely subscribe because I've got a ton more amazing videos coming out soon. Follow me on Instagram to get updates or to see the work that I'm posting as I'm posting it. And I will see you guys next week.